Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm a game show junkie. Around late 1988, when I was still getting adjusted to school, I had a routine. I would come home, watch the remaining game shows on the USA Network block, and then by 4 o'clock, there was nothing. My mom said, why don't you read a book? While I wasn't a heavy reader just yet, and even now I only read the newest biographies. So after doing not much, I decided to turn the dial and see what I could find. You want to tell me something, sir? Were you running with uh, Mr. Ross? Yes, I was. No. Um, says you're being used by white power organizations. Ugh, no. Right. Right, way to go. Let's hear for the gold team. Red team, gold team? Is this supposed to be like double dare? No, this is messier than double dare. This is awesome. Just by chance, I landed on the only kids game show that gave Double Dare a run for its money. To celebrate the return of Double Dare, let's take a look at its only real competition, Funhouse. If you're ready, let's get messy! Two teams of two, made up of one boy and one girl, played against each other in a series of funny stunts worth 25 points each. After each stunt, they come back to center stage for a bonus question, also worth 25 points. The question usually has something to do with the stunts just played. Sleeping Beauty didn't sleep in a sleeping bag, but in the film Sleeping Beauty, did the prince wake the princess by singing to her? Shelly. Gave her a kiss. Who? he kissed her all right for 25 points. That's right. Each show's stunts would be set up boys versus boys, girls versus girls, and team versus team. The stunts had their variety. The most used was get the most of something in a container in a time limit. If there was a tie, both teams were awarded 25 points. Another kind was strictly luck-based. The team had to get two of something to win the stunt. It ranged from picking up a pie with their teeth to get two big win pie tins, to finding oil in a mini derrick, to getting two dollar bills in a box, and getting a shower of water instead of glop. These stunts never ended in a tie. Then there were my top two favorite stunts because they were the messiest. The slop machine and dumpo. Just look. <laughs> Number one is cow mucus. That's what cow mucus looks like. Guess what you got? Pig drool, number two. Here it comes. She knows. Oh! Poor Lisa got fish gut. Here it comes, Lisa. Ew! Lumpy and lumpy and stumpy. Adam, guess what? You're rocking and rolling. You got water. Yeah! All right, one water. But Danny, that is time for Dumpo. Take it like a man. Dump him. Oh! Oh no! Dax, you got lucky because it missed your head, but it got your whole body. After the third stunt, the game ended with a Grand Prix race, two exciting laps all around the studio. The boys or girls started pushing their partners or running freely around the track. When they got to a station, they had to perform something before moving on. As they ran around the track, they picked up 10 and 25 point tokens to add more points to their score. If a token hit the ground, it was out of play and they couldn't pick up the token. For the second lap, they'd switch lanes and jobs. 
the first team to cross the finish line won 25 points. Starting in the second season, the last lap included a token bank, where the players could grab up to 200 points in tokens. After the race, the tokens were counted and points added, starting with the team trailing. The team with the highest score wins and goes into the funhouse for a ton of cash and prizes. In the rare case of a tie game, a tie-breaking question would be asked. Buzzing in with the correct answer would give that team the game, but buzzing in with the wrong answer would give the game to their opponents. Ironically, the question was always about tie games. I witnessed this happening only one time, and of course, my VCR was not running. Ugh! The Funhouse was the star of the show. What separated this from Double Dare's Obstacle Course was you couldn't easily replicate this in your own home, backyard, or local playground. This was an experience you could only get on a Hollywood soundstage. Yeah, maybe at your local carnival. The house had a variety of rooms, obstacles, and booby traps to throw contestants off. The house also consisted of six red prize tags and ten green cash tags. The team had a total of two minutes to grab as many tags as possible. When they said go, the first person would run into the funhouse and grab any three tags they want, come back out, high-five their partner who would go in for three more tags. They'd keep alternating until the two minutes were up. One of the 16 tags was designated the Secret Power Prize tag. It would be shown to the home audience before the run, and if they grabbed that tag, they would win a bonus vacation. We'll look at a run later on. Just like the other kids' game shows of the time, set designers Anthony Sabatino and William H. Harris made the set pop with bright, vibrant colors all around the set, from orange to white, in just the right places. What set Funhouse apart from the other kids' game shows was the team colors. Instead of red and blue, they went with red and yellow in an attempt to stay with the vibrant colors. This also helped them in some stunts where they had red ketchup glop and yellow mustard glop. Another key visual was the twin cheerleaders Jackie and Samantha Forrest, who brought out and introduced the teams. Not only would the contestants be rooted on by the audience, but they had their own personal cheerleader. That's awesome! They would also sort of demonstrate what the contestants had to do in the stunts, the race, and in the funhouse. Of course, the biggest visual was the mess. The messier the contestants got, the more excited we got. Not only were the contestants getting messy in the stunts, but they were also getting messy during the race at times. The non-stop mess made us extremely happy. The host of Funhouse wasn't the ordinary host with the suit and tie. It was Cherry Hill, New Jersey native J.D. Roth. Roth first tried to break into television as an actor, coming in second place on the talent competition Star Search. At age 19, Roth was the youngest game show host of all time. Not only was J.D. young, but he seemed to be the older brother or older cousin we all would like to have. If something went wrong in the funhouse, J.D. would try to help them around the obstacle. Oh, pull! Keep going! Pull the door! Pull the door! No, 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 no! This door! Just trying to get in front of Sturdy Hat three tags. Listen! The door! Pull it! She's trying to get out! Tommy, help her out! Help her out! Help her get out! Go! Brian, come here! I still don't know who was happier with all the mess, the contestants or the host. Audience, check this girl out. She gets into her work, no doubt about it. All right, we're winning the race. Applause for Kristen. I want the chocolate on my hands. Come on, give me a high five. Themes and sound effects were big for me and a lot of other viewers. Score Productions put together a magnificent theme song for Funhouse. It's upbeat and feels almost carnival-like. In fact, if you went to your local carnival and walked up to their Funhouse, you'd probably hear the theme in your head.
Also, instead of trying to make a similar theme for the Funhouse run, they composed an original two-minute piece. Derek's on his way into the Funhouse. He's going into the balloon cage. Yeah, he did that beautifully. He's heading on into the prize match. max Which one is it? Oh, we got it on the first try. Way to go. Other sounds were two similar buzzing effects, a time's up horn, and a sound for points being added. Two, three, four. Originally, the catchphrase was said before every run through the funhouse. We're going to the funhouse. We're going to the funhouse. Ready? Go, Carrie. However, during the second season, JD started out every game by saying, "Let's get messy." Let's get, get messy. messy. All right. Let's get messy. There you have it. Funhouse, the only kids game show that gave Nickelodeon shows a run for their money. I wasn't lucky enough to get JD Roth on here since he's been a busy producer in Hollywood. But I did get to learn about the show through a conversation with one of the many contestants that appeared on the show. Tune in next time, and I'll tell you all about it. But until next time, this is Brian, your game show junkie, saying, Hope your house is a fun house. Yeah!